Hi everyone, it's Derek from the iReady podcast and this is my reaction to the 5-2 victory against Royal Antwerp in the last 32 of the Europa League game 2 today which puts us through 9-5 on aggregate. What another game, just I don't think anybody expected another game like we did last week but they certainly done their best to do it and they put us through the ringer for a wee bit of the game, it was certainly a wee bit closer than than it needed to be on a couple of occasions, we could have been well in front uh, within the first 30 minutes but we got there in the end, they put on the performance, a few things to work on obviously defensively but great going forward on occasion and... Uh, I'll take that every day of the week to be honest even though there was a point through the game I was like I'd, I'm not enjoying this anymore this is too nerve wracking but just fantastic all round from the players what a performance what a shift they put in all credit to Antwerp as well because they never gave up even going into the 90th minute they were always chasing the ball always chasing the goal and they put on a good game unfortunately we, we were the ones that came out victors in this game but the game itself one change from the Dundee United game the first half was really a, a game of two halves where we really should have been three up within the first first 30 minutes, first 25 30 minutes we had a lot of time, a lot of space, a lot of possession, moving the ball about well and ultimately confirmed my thoughts from last week that Antwerp were not all that great and it was poor defensively from us and we got the goal within the first 8 minutes as well with Morella scoring, the ball was down the right collected by the defender at the touchline who passes forward to his teammate on the edge of the box, he tries to pass it back to the keeper with a poor ball, the ever alert Kent nips in and intercepts the ball cuts it back to Morellas who was under pressure but shoots it into an empty net, brilliant all round and great tenacity, great vision and great skill there from Kent and, and Morellas to, to finish the ball off there in that in the next kind of 10 15 minutes we really should have buried it with another couple of chances and then we just seemed to switch off we were second to every ball granted antwerp started to close us down more as well and close that space down they had a very dangerous move just a few minutes before they had scored as well and it had all the hallmarks of last week where it was a combination of poor marking and we made it easy for them to cut through the defense and that's what they did so on the 31st minute when they drew level it was play down the left, Balogun turned inside and out, the attacker got the cross off, or just off the ground, and the attacker taps it into the back of the net on the outside of his foot. Really simple and poor marking as well. Balogun got turned inside out, I don't know if he had picked up a knock at that point as well, so that might have contributed to him not being able to pick up the player well, but just the poor marking as well in the front there. It seemed as if there was a possibility of offside. The rules are just absolutely baffling these days, but I don't know. But then Antwerp were, were probably the, the better of the two sides in the last kind of 10 15 minutes of the half. Into half time, though, we did make a substitution. Balogun came off and Patterson came on. Balogun, as I said, he didn't appear to be moving freely. He had picked up a wee knock, combined with him picking up a booking as well and being turned inside out a few occasions. Um, it was kind of an obvious substitution to make and picked up the booking and he's, he'll be out the first leg of the, the last. 16 However, it was almost written in the stars because pretty much straight from kickoff, we went 2 1 up with, of all people, Nathan Patterson scoring. And I bloody well missed it as well because my stream had went down at that time. But I've seen the replay since. And pretty much, as I said, pretty much straight from kickoff, Davis digs the ball out from midfield, gets the ball to Morellas, who gets by the first man, then feeds a lovely ball forward to Patterson, who was running forward, gets the ball at the edge of the box on the right, drives it in at the box, and hits a shot across the keeper and in at the back of the net. You could not have scripted that for, for it to be the first touch after he coming on within the first kind of 30 seconds as well just incredible and all is nearly forgiven with the boy but certainly what a way to make up for your discrepancies nonetheless I was still trying to find a replay at this point I was still trying to type up the, the, the last goal and then all of a sudden on the 53rd minute Ryan Kent put us 3-1 up and that's what we thought the game was done and dusted there an absolute stunning move with quick passing from the right back side cut inside to Hadji on the halfway line who dropped the shoulder beautifully and fed a great ball to Morelis down the right he drops the shoulder, skips past his man into the box, cuts it back to Kent who feeds it into the back of the net, just an all round quick, incisive, brilliantly executed goal We've seen it before from our team, and especially in Europe, we have got that ability. It was fantastic and ripped the piss out of that defence, to be honest. However, as I was still trying to type everything up, Antwerp pulled the goal back on the 57th minute to make it 3-2. Ball dinked over our defence, McGregor charges out, Goldson t seems to tap the ball as if he was trying to put it out. He never read the keeper, there was clearly no communication between Goldson and McGregor at that point. The Antwerp player keeps on running, gets to the touchline, collects the ball and then he manages to tap it into an empty net at a tight angle. Shocking defending again, as I said there must have been a communication issue with Goldson. We've not had too many this season where balls have been knocked over the top of our 
your defence but if you know last season that was the thing that outdone Goldson especially every other game last year and as I said we've not had too many of them to deal with this season because we've been so dominant in that midfield area but it was a simple ball over the top that outdone us and pretty poor we gifted them that there but we had to regroup and fortunately that was the only other goal they got in the game they were still certainly dangerous going forward throughout the rest of the game all they needed at that point was two goals and it would have taken it to extra time however we managed to go 4-2 up when we were awarded a penalty in the 77th minute. Morelos was brought down by a lazy, lazy challenge. He did go down in stages and, and granted to him, I've seen referees not give him that before. He did try to stay upright and that was all credit to Morelos. But certainly the Julie, the penalty was given. Barisic up his steps in the 79th minute, put it to the right hand side once again and it was this time it was blasted high and no chance for the keeper at all and that was basically the game done and dusted at that point there. Still didn't really change what Antwerp had to do. We made a couple of changes as well, Davis off, Kent off, Zungu of all people as well to come on, total taking the piss there from Gerard. but certainly, you know, what benefits the team would give a few players a rest is there. Morelos came off on the 84th minute and Itton came on and then on the 91st minute we were awarded another penalty right on the right hand side of the box, cuts inside between the two fenders and brought down with a clumsy pullback as well, clear penalty, 92nd minute, up steps Itton and sends the ball down the middle, the keeper got his leg to it but it was too powerful and it went into the back of net so that was the game rounded off and absolutely delighted with that another thing to note as well and this is going to enrage the orcs as well is the fact that Morelis is getting a heap of praise as he should do because his performance was fantastic tonight but also as well we were clearly on the tack well within our rights to, to go ahead and he stopped the play as well for their injured player who was down on the sidelines a fantastic piece of sportsmanship there but at the same time we were clear in and goal and he stopped so um, but fantastic sportsmanship there from Morelis see he's not always this big bad pantomime villain that, that he, he, he gets made out to be in the Scottish press but that's fantastic the draw for the next round is tomorrow so there's a few games to go tonight still a lot of, a lot of teams to bottom out their results I don't care who we get now um, I really don't we've matched last season's tally of, of getting to the last 16 would we like to go a round or two more absolutely of course we would We've got a few defensive issues to work on, clearly, from, from this game and the last game. But folk are going to be fearing us, and we shouldn't go into games fearing anybody. The sky's the limit with this team and the way they can play. I joked about in the last podcast, we're winning this thing. We said that it was never likely in 2008. We're now into the last 16. Who knows what can happen? The league's a formality now. It will come. If it's not in the next two or three games, it's going to come in the next four or five games. It doesn't really make a difference. On that note, it leads us in. We're not playing until next Wednesday now, obviously, a wee break because of the, the League Cup final. Livingston, obviously, they've, they're playing in that game there. We're playing Livingston on Wednesday the 3rd of March at the Tony Macaroni Arena at 6pm. So they're an informed team. We've got to be very wary of that. So we'll just need to wait and see how it pans out. And, you know, Celtic could have dropped further points by that point. So you never know. But anyway... Dave and I won't be back with another podcast probably until next week at some point. So if you want to go and check out our website, which is iReadyPodcast.wordpress.com, then you can find all the stuff that we do there. So enjoy the rest of your weekend. Enjoy the draw tomorrow. Thanks for listening and goodbye.